We'll read Haggai chapter 2 verse 20 to 23. Haggai chapter 2 verse 20 to 23. About three, four verses there. But then we'll be drawing a whole conclusion of the book in a sense to summarize the whole of the things we've been talking about and, and see what the Lord is also saying in this specific portion here. Let's read. The word of the Lord came a second time to Haggai on the 24th day of the month. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I am about to shake the heavens and the earth and to overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I am about to destroy the strength of kingdoms of the nations and overthrow the chariots and their riders. And the horses and their riders shall go down, everyone by the sword of his brother. On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Sheatel, declares the Lord, and make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you declares the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord is going on with his speaking to his people who have come back to his land and he has assured them of his presence. And in this latter part of it, he has a good way of showing us that he prevails amongst the nations, amongst kingdoms, amongst thrones. He prevails and he is very sure of that because the Lord speaks in first person saying, I will do this. I am this. I will take this. I have chosen you. Very, very strong words that the Lord is uh, giving to his people. And Zerubbabel is hearing these words from the prophet. The prophet, the very mouth of God amongst his people. At one time, some time ago, I think in 93, Reader's Digest. So they had this title that went like, Our God Resigns. Then they later learned that what they published is what they, what they intended. So they made a correction. So now they are, they are, they are, the other paper comes out and then it reads like, we have a correction, guys. We meant our God reigns. And that's, that's how one letter can make a difference. Because it's only S that they added eh, in the first publication which had an article. And that's how people live, as though God has resigned. People are discouraged in the way they work. People are resigning from their pulpits. Others are immoral in high positions of leadership, there is corruption, there is murder, there is greed, there is bad news around us. Mungu wapi? You have heard that question, eh? Mungu wapi? Not too long ago, Christian values were admired even in our own country. Today they are sort of doubted or abhorred. It's as though the society has a way of continuing in evil and evil and evil. And of course, people love to have their paneled houses and forgetting the Lord himself. And it is easy to wonder, in this current world, is our God reigning? Is he in power? Is he still absolute? Yes, he is. Our God prevails. Look at the way he speaks here to Zerubbabel. And we, we remember the whole situation of the Israel people as they come back, the Jewish people. They are coming back and they are not as strong as they were before. Some of them were even remembering the glory of the other temple. And they are like, guys, you don't know what you're looking at. We are trying to make it, but we can't. And the Lord himself has been working in their heart, even telling them to an extent of, yes, you have done it. You have built the temple. But you know what I want? I want you to render your hearts. It is your hearts that I am after. And at that, we can continue working together as people of the Lord. Render your hearts, not your actions, not your garments, not the things that you do physically only, but your very hearts. Because I struck you with blight, I struck you with mildew, and you did not turn to me, declares the Lord. Do you remember that part? Very good. Now today, the Lord again brings his word, and he will surely prevail, because he has an eternal plan. What is he saying? I am going to shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow the thrones of kingdoms. I will overthrow chariots and their riders. Then I will take you, O Zerubbabel. And this time he calls him my servant. And I will make you like a signet ring. Because I, the Lord, has chosen you. This is beautiful. When you hear of riders going into sea, when you hear of chariots going into sea, when you hear of an army that is destroyed by the Lord, you remember the other captivity, the Egyptian captivity. 
how the Lord rescued his people. And when they were going off, and the Pharaoh is following them together with his army, the Lord parts the Red Sea. And while they are just leaving, when the, first, the last person puts out their foot, ah, the water swallowed, swallowed. You remember that the chariots could not move. That is the Lord who was executing his plan of salvation. And the Lord is not easy when it comes to protecting his people. He can throw everything so that his name remains great amongst his people and the world. Praise the Lord. The Lord is sovereign over all things, as you can see here. He is talking of nations. He is talking of overthrowing them. He is talking of uh, even the chariots and riders and kings. And every other person on earth is like subject to the Lord. None of them, not even one, is greater than the Lord. Praise the Lord. And this is Yahweh. Do not forget, when you hear these words, that the Lord is saying, I am with you. I will be with you. That my strength is going forth with you. My spirit is in your midst. It is the Lord Yahweh. And these are things he has done. He brought the plagues upon Egypt, if you remember. You do remember that? And then he also took care of the kings who were disturbing his rights in the desert. You remember Og and Bashan? You remember those people? The Lord did dealt with them. This is the Lord that we are dealing with today. The king of all nations, the father of all his people. He's even the one eh, who took care of Goliath just to tell his people how great he is. Look to him. Praise the Lord. And he means business when he's unfolding his plan, when he's saving his people so they can come back and worship him, come back and glorify him, come back and be his people as though they are sheep that have already gone astray, bringing them back to the pen. And then he speaks of Zerubbabel here in a big way, saying that on that day, I, the Lord of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of your tail. You, I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord. The signet ring was a major thing. We are, not, we are never to forget this signet ring. It is a ring that uh, when uh, an envelope is sealed and then the king uh, puts the last dot on it as like the symbol of his kingship there, then whoever receives that letter, they open it. And when they are reading, they are reading it as though the king is speaking to them. Because it has the whole authority. The highest authority in the land is that of the king. And so, the king, when he places his ring symbol on something, the signet ring, when he places it there, amefunga yo maneno, amameweka authority yake yote. It's as though the final decision, the final mark, the final authority has been stamped on a document. That's what a signet ring is. And that's what the Lord is saying, Zerubbabel, I will make you like a signet ring. Zerubbabel didn't leave his days to become a king. Neither did his son. Actually, the story about Zerubbabel is a bit tough because he's just a of Christ here and we are going to see that slowly. But the story about him is because of his grandfather called Jehoiakim. You remember that guy? So Jehoiakim did something and the Lord was not happy with him until he put a curse on anyone who would sit on the throne. And he said that I have taken away the signet ring from you. That's in Jeremiah. I have taken it away. And now the Lord also knows he made a promise to David who is far, far, far behind Jehoiakim. And said that there will always a man, there will be always a man in your line in this kingdom. And the story can trace back, 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 back to Kina Joseph. Way, 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 Konyuma Kabisa. And the Lord will be following that plan to see that it is fulfilled. And now here comes a man called Zerubbabel, who the Lord says, On the chosen day of the Lord, you will become the chosen individual to accomplish my chosen plan. Because the Lord has a plan of salvation. The Lord has a plan of making salvation known. Both for the Gentiles and for the Jews. Both for his people and the whole world. He has a plan that people would know him. Habakkuk will say, as the waters cover the sea, so the knowledge of the word of the Lord will be among the people. So the Lord has that plan. He means it. And that's the way now, that plan, way, way, way from Jehoiakim, captivity, coming back, Zerubbabel. Then the Lord says, Zerubbabel, I'm going to take you, and on my day, I'll make you the chosen individual who becomes like a signet ring. Praise the Lord. Anyway, of course, now, let's, let's demystify. Let's make it easy. Eh? 
so that we see where, where, where is this signatory coming in. This is the idea. When Zerubbabel is born, and he is led by the Lord to come with the people back to uh, the land, he is sort of coming to join the line that was split way back in David's time after David got a son called Solomon and another one called Nathan, and that was a split. Okay? And now in genealogy, in the stories that we read uh, through the Bible, you find that that story from Solomon and from Nathan, because that's where the parting came from Daudi, it will go down again and we'll find Zerubbabel. And the easiest place to look at that is when we go into the genealogy of Jesus. Okay. So we have the genealogy of Jesus in Luke and we have that in, uh, in Matthew. And that of Mary, which is in Luke, has a line of people who are coming. That one we call it the blood lineage of Jesus Christ. Uh, there, 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 there was blood. But remember, Jesus was not of the seed of a man. Eh? So for him now, we call it the legal line. So the idea here is, in, oh, we should just look at this so that we see what you're saying. Let's turn to Luke chapter 3 and verse 27. Uh, we make this uh, very clear and then uh, we join the dots. Luke chapter 3 and verse 27. So after the genealogy of Jesus is being given according to the line of Mary, we get to a point where there is this, the son of Joanan, the son of Reza, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, the son of Neri. Then it goes on, 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 on. And finally, it will come to where Jesus is. Okay? And then now, the other one is in Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. You can place a finger there if you don't mind. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 12. This is how the story is unfolding. Now this is Joseph's line. Joseph's line, of course, is the Joseph, the, the line of blood, but we know he, he becomes a father to Jesus Christ, though not through his natural seed. Okay? So Matthew chapter 1 and verse 12, which is the legal line. After the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of... Aha, uh -huh, you remember Jeconiah? The one the Lord said, Nimeondoa septa, Nimeondoa signet ring. And she had tell the father of Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel, the father of Abud, okay? And Abud, the father of Eliakim. So from Zerubbabel, you can see also two lines are coming. So that one line will later go down, down, down and find Mary. And then the Mary will become the mother of Jesus. And now in Matthew here, this line from Zerubbabel also takes another route. And it will go eventually find Joseph. Uh, you see verse 16 there. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. You see that flow? That's the way it flows. The same case uh, in, in your look, it will flow down until you find the Son of God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So that's, that's the flow. So from David, Solomon, Nathan, from Zerubbabel, you have Abud and the other guy on the other end, and eventually going down to Mary, and eventually going down to Joseph, and then eventually we have ah, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Okay? And Jesus Christ is the center of the final goal of what God is doing in human history. You and I know clearly that Zerubbabel is going to die. He's going to die. He's not going to see these promises. He won't even see the Lord shaking the nations as such. Because when Greece is being shaken, Russia is being, is being shaken, all those, when the shakings are happening of nations, the Zerubbabel won't be there. When God is building that kingdom that cannot be shaken, a spiritual kingdom, again, Zerubbabel is long dead. He's just like the other guys who are longing to see what the Lord is saying. And even her guy will be dead. Zerubbabel thus receives a promise, but they are not naturally, naturally coming to him as a reality. The things, of, of course, have come to him, some of them. He has seen the way the Lord has called him the leader of the people, and the people have been charged by the Lord to continue building the temple, and he has seen that reality uh, arriving. But him becoming a signatory, that ring or sign of approval, that sign of closing the matter, closing the chapter, he won't see it in his lifetime. It is until Jesus Christ that that comes to be. Okay? So, Remember that. Uh, maybe I should just uh, have taken you to Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 24 to 25. Uh, let, let me just go there. We, we better tie these once and for all. Uh, mm -hmm. 22, 
24 to 25. So here the, the prophet is speaking. Um, just hear how, how the, the, the information flows here. As I live, this, this is Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 24 to 25. As I live, declares the Lord, though Konia, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet ring on my right hand, yet I will tear you off and give you into the hand of those who seek your life, into the hand of those whom you are afraid, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hands of the Chaldeans. I will hurl you and the mother of who bore you into another country where you are not born, and there you shall die. But to the land to which they will long to return, they shall not return. That's when they were being told by Jeremiah, Mutaenda into captivity. You will see it. And the signet ring departs at that level. All right? And the Lord now brings it back. And he comes to this guy who is Zerubbabel, telling him you are like that sign. You are the one who is bringing the people back. In a sense, everything is being tied along you. But this actually is not you because you will die. It points to another who comes into the future. And that other one is the one in whom all things hold together. Praise the Lord. So it's, it's a very good, good, good place here when you're reading this. And it's an encouragement, especially for us who can see these things as we see them. For them, they didn't see them clearly as we do. They were longing to see them, but they couldn't. They didn't have that opportunity. As we can look back, they were looking forward to Christ. As we look back to Christ, and you can see the whole picture of how God is unfolding his plan of salvation. Remember that thing we were talking about all the through, that the Lord is bringing his people back to his place, giving them his presence, and he's even giving them his blessing. You have seen that in the book of Haggai. And that's what is unfolding here. Because again, the Lord continues in protection of his people, saying that he's going to shake the nations, and he will shake them hard. He's going to shake thrones, and he will really shake them hard. But there is one spiritual kingdom that he's building that cannot be shaken. That one will last forever through Christ his son. Praise the Lord. So when you hear of this signet ring, that is pointing to one master, one Lord, one savior, even so Jesus Christ. And all these things will be tying. There will be his priestly authority, there will be his kingship authority, there will be his prophetic authority as well in one person. It will now tie together. Here we have three people representing all that. Now they are going to tie together and come back to one man Jesus Christ, and in him all things will hold together. All things, all created things will hold together. It is through this one man, Jesus Christ, that the Lord who is building a kingdom, building the very spiritual temple, the church, is where that will hold together and all will be called to look up to him. The way these guys were being told, this is your leader, Zerubbabel, that's the way now. We are also called to look to our one, 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 one only, the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. All things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, those that are visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. That's how the book ends. It points to one who is coming and in him, all things hold together. He is our signet ring, and the Lord prevails among the nations. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the joy of looking at your word, and thank you for the book of Haggai, that we have been challenged in many ways to think about how we do your work and how we are involved in our work with you. Thank you so much, even so, for pointing to Christ who has already come, and today we have been made your people and your children and you are our father. But we give thanks to you. Please bless our day and our activities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.